Welcome to Alaska Earthquake Science Facts. I'm Carl Tate. Sustained shaking from the 1964 earthquake liquefied a subsurface clay layer beneath Turnigan Heights subdivision in Anchorage, causing extreme deformation. Here's a photo, Turnigan Heights subdivision following the magnitude 9.2 earthquake in 1964. The lower left is Cook Inlet, that's the ocean. And we will be looking at more photos of this area, but you can see these are homes in here and what appear to be a pretty sharp break between the undeformed section and the Turnigan Heights slide. Much of what you'll see here is from a 1965 USGS special uh, publication on this event dedicated to the effects of the earthquake in the Anchorage area. And here's a map, extremely detailed map. The scale bar at the bottom shows 1500 feet. So we're looking at sort of the, the scale of homes. You can see individual homes on this map and where the former coastline was and where the coastline was after the earthquake. And we'll look at a couple images of today of where uh, what these sites look like today. Here are two regions we'll zoom into, uh, both of them spanning from the residential area to the offshore region. Here's one of these. So here's an image from Google Earth and we'll superimpose sections of this map. So you can see the forested region here corresponds where no one lives anymore would be the, some of the strongest deformation right at the boundary. And you can see other little cracks and fissures mapped in here. So although the most dramatic features are shown to the upper left here, there are other deformation that's not easy to see uh, still within these homes today. So we can kind of remove the geologic map to see We'll just go back one more to see so we can where the homes are today and adding back in the geological mapping that was done right after the earthquake. We'll now look start at this scale and zoom in on some of these features to see how strong this ground deformation was due to this liquefaction. We now see the scale almost look like Legos or something, the way these homes or monopoly houses tipped over uh, in these kind of faulting, normal faulting caused by extension in this slide. On the ground, You can see at the right, it's difficult to, to even tell what's up, but I'm assuming that this tree gives the photographer an idea of what should be up. There's a lot of other things that are all over the place. Similarly, people standing for scale, you can see what is upward and the kind of deformation to the left. Here's a small scale fault formed during the Turnigan Heights landslide. You can see a person standing here. In geological scales, it's small, but it's big compared to this person. It shows the kind of features, and it even has lines where the ground would have scraped one side of this block over here against this, this fault. Now I'm going to look at this portion of the map. There's going to be a detailed cross section between these two circles at the intersection of Turnigan Parkway and Macaulay Avenue. So if we zoom in here, this shows G and G prime. You see here approximate pre-quake bluff line. So that's where the bluff used to be. And then a big chunk of it cut out here and spilled out into Cook Inlet. And so here shows the intersection of Macaulay and Turnigan Parkway. I'll just point out all these little black lines here um, are fissures, places where sand shot up or small bits of deformation that were enough to, to map. And a reminder uh, that 
of really the connection between these homes and what happened here was uh, shown to be pretty sharp here, but there were signs that there could have been greater problems um, further away from this break. And this shows what some of these look like, ground fissures in the subdivision. So here are the homes and you can see a fissure here, this dark material in here. Here's a crack down at the, at the left. You can see another one in here. So these would have been mapped. You can see nicely with the snow. Uh, this earthquake happened in March. You can see when this wet slurry of sand came up, um, it was easier to identify. So here's this area, you can see a baseball field and you can already by now get a sense of where the deformation was because there aren't too many homes out in this area, although there are some. So we'll again show the deformation. So all of this material was strongly, strongly um, damaged and deformed in that ground right up to this line right here. So we'll march through this. You can see the line is basically right here. It was a really sharp line and anything to the right out in here um, is being built on the, the landslide. I'll go back one more time just to, so picture. And now we're gonna look at a cross section, a very detailed section done by geologists across this line. So here's a section that they chose, and it's very hard to see at this scale, but I'll split it up into three sections, starting from um, the intersection of those two streets on the left and finishing out, um, out in the water. So here's the left intersection, Turnigan Parkway and Macaulay Avenue, that's the G. So they're gonna show on the top, it is a map view of the deformation and the bottom is a cross section. So for people new to geology, uh, this is a really nice example of what geologists use information at the surface and potentially um, maybe there's some well log data that they have to help extrapolate, but they're trying to get a three dimensional picture from information that's mapped at the surface. And this is the starting point for this cross section. This shows mean sea level and then these are in feet, so tens of feet above sea level. Keep your eyes on this line. It says approximate ground surface before earthquake. So you can already see that a lot of this material is something like 20 feet below the surface. So right off the bat, there are chunks of houses and things that are dropping down 20 feet. And so if we look at that line, we will see it uh, as we go on to the next one. So now we're going toward the right and you can see really massive deformation of, of, of this material, as you can see from the photographs. So here's the approximate ground surface. So before there was kind of a bluff out here, it went out here and then it dropped down. And so now you can imagine that the ground used to go much lower, but now a lot of the material that was on land has basically slid down into the water. And so this is showing all these kinds of faulting we expect these to be what are called normal faulting associated with extension. And extension is exactly what's happening here. What used to be a bluff, you now basically pull that out into the water, gravity driven and driven by this liquefaction of the subsurface, uh, nothing to hold it up. It just flowed out into Cook Inlet. And you can see even at the level of trees being mapped here, a lot of detail that you can appreciate and all these little things would represent faults. This is getting out to the end of the cross section. So the approximate ground surface below the earth, earth uh, before the earthquake was much lower. And after the earthquake, the ground surface is higher because this landslide has come out there. So you can see now the, the tide is coming in at this, uh, at this new material. And so, as I said, I like this connection between a cross section. We can see things at our scale, trees, houses, and what, what, uh, what was mapped in extreme detail. Turnigan Heights was one of five mapped landslides in Anchorage. Uh, this shows a zoom in on, on Anchorage. And if we look in here, there's Turnigan Heights, L Street, Fourth Avenue, probably the most famous shot with the, the downtown Anchorage. Government Hill slide, 
and the native hospital slide. And so this is the water area. This is out in, into Cook Inlet. This shows Alaska Native Hospital landslide, which is on First Avenue. And it's almost like a Hollywood scale picture, but it's a reminder. Uh, you see this huge fracture here. This is a hospital and there are certain kinds of facilities and infrastructure that we as a society value more than others. And a hospital is one of those, schools are another. Um, so these are places we're particularly concerned about with regard to earthquake damage. And you can see that this kind of looks like a close call with the style of deformation shown here. You also see at the lower left, a lot of deformation um, and uh, oil storage tank that was damaged due to this event. And this is a view today taken out of Google Earth. Um, there's no hospital anymore. You can see trees have grown in. They're large trees having grown in over this area. There's no, there's no storage tank of, of uh, oil or anything down there. But next time you're down First Avenue in Anchorage um, and you see this vacated lot, um, I hope you think about the 1964 earthquake um, and, and really the deformation that happened associated with it. This shows a damaged fuel storage tank at the base of the hospital. This fencing here has been erected to contain the spill. So this would have been some time afterwards, but um, this is caused by this normal faulting and extension and buckling coming right out to this, this fuel tank. Just a reminder of the kinds of things you really, we don't want these kinds of things happening if, if, we can, if they can be avoided. Government Hill Elementary School you know, this is almost an emotional picture to see uh, this kind of damage to a school, but this is another one of these localized cases of deformation that happened in Anchorage um, due to the geologic conditions at these sites. Same shot, the caption says, wreckage of Government Hill School as viewed from the playground looking west. Grobin, the sort of drop down area is what that name is. And the foreground is about 12 feet deep. And note the undamaged water tower. So again, there's this huge earthquake happening, shaking effects in wide places over large regions. Um, and yet the damage can be, you know, extreme in one place and un untouched in another. This is from a paper in 2019, um, looking at that same photo showing after the 1964 earthquake, looking at that graben, graben. Even in 2013, you could still see there's the water tower and there's the, you know, not as, not as sharp as it was in 1964, but what the authors were pointing out was that um, the same area on the playground at the school after a magnitude 7.1 earthquake in 2018 um, had some cracks opening up in the same spot. So kind of an interesting reminder that um, this area is probably prone to uh, shaking and deformation from not just 64 earthquake, but other earthquakes as well. Takeaway topics, earthquake shaking can cause dramatic deformation and damage in localized regions, sometimes far from the earthquake source. This earthquake originated offshore a long ways away. It wasn't like it was right, right under Anchorage or at least necessarily this, the extreme shaking. The Turnigan Heights landslide involved extension across a large number of 10 meter scale faults within the upper tens of meters of soil. So by most scales, we would call that small scale, but the processes happening with faulting and extension are something that happens at a lot of different scales in geology. Geologists carefully choose which regions to geologically map in very fine detail and which regions to map with coarser detail. Clearly, they chose this one extended block in Anchorage because, you know, understanding where all these homes and people are living, there's a high priority to try to um, understand and map what happened to avoid this kind of thing in the future. Seismology, geology, and engineering are important for city planning, such as deciding what types of buildings can be built in what areas of the city. Some buildings, like hospitals and schools, are valued more than others. And just to ponder, 
question is, is the Turnigan Heights subdivision now safer for building compared with pre-1964? Is it safe enough? And I don't have the answer to that, but as you go around Anchorage, hopefully some of these slides will make you think about why things are built in the places they are. Thank you for watching. Stick around for supplemental material.